Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Right Left. And this time I'm going to jump right in with the most expensive fountain pen that I own. And probably the most expensive fountain pen that I will ever own. And it is the Pelican M200. So as far as Pelicans go, it is the it's the baby of the of the range it's the i would i would call it the it's the entry level pen i paid under 160 dollars for it and still to me that was a lot of money i am not a collector in that way that i'm going to spend a lot of money on pens i use them they're tools for me however um this pen in particular um and one just like it that I'm going to show you um, were a very special purchase for me. I have two of them. Um, and I, I mainly bought them for art purposes. So this is the first one I ever purchased. This is also a Pelican M200. And I purchased it because of an artist that I greatly admire named Frederick Franck. And Frederick Frank wrote many, many books that are all on my stack of most loved art books about sort of the Zen of drawing, right? And the benefit of learning how to see. So right, he's right up there with John Ruskin for me as far as teaching me how to see, which greatly affects my art practice. And the pen that he used for all of his drawings was a pelican. And at the time, the model that he used, it was like an M1, I don't know, M1 something, maybe M150, I'm not sure, um, didn't exist. I, I couldn't find it. And this was the next best thing. And I did a lot of research about it. And when I saw the price, I almost died. <laughs> but I saved up money and I bought it. And I have not regretted it for a moment. These pens are an incredible value for the money. Um, they, I, I'm going to show you, you know, what I love about them. Number one, they're beautiful. They're classically just really beautiful. This is the first one I purchased, I think, maybe four years ago. And the M200 um, is at the entry level with a gold-toned stainless steel nib. And the M205 is the same pen with, a, with a, just a steel, a silver-colored steel nib. Um, so that's the only difference. But the M um, the M200, M205 are the entry-level Pelicans as far as a, a really fine pen go. Pelican has some student, like student-grade pens too, um, but they're they're not what I'm interested in. I was interested in a fine pen that I could afford and that would do what Fre Frederick Frank showed me that it could do. So one of the things that you will notice with fountain pens is is that not many of them are flexible. So the line that you get is pretty much the line that you get. You're not gonna get a lot of variation in your line. However, um, with this Pelican M200 in the fine nib, both of these are fine nibs. They also come in extra fine and they come in medium and broad, but in the fine nib, they are quite flexible for a stainless steel nib. When you start getting into gold nibs, which the price is going to jump up to $400, $500, right? Um, when you start getting into gold nibs, they are a little bit more flexible. But these, this pen is incredibly flexible. And I'm going to show you an example of that. So I have, this is moleskin paper, by the way, which I really enjoy writing on as a left-handed person because the dry time is not terribly long. It has great properties for fountain pens. Only when I get something that's like a real spill or um, like I spilled a little, I flicked my pen and it spurted, um, then I might get some show through. But basically the bleed through is really great. So it's a really great paper that, um, does not it dries fairly easily so that means i'm not smearing my ink all the time and i can turn the page quickly i'm going to show you before we're done an example of a paper that doesn't do that um which i have back here so this nib first of all it is um you have to unscrew it to unpost it 
all right it's a screw a screw cap not a clip not a clip cap it is um, a really nice plastic resin body um, it has the beautiful pelican logo on the top and the beautiful pelican bill clip that I really love about pelican pens because they're so easy um, they just go on super easy where other pens can be kind of clunky the pelicans just go right on um, so get back here already so you unscrew it to unpost it and then you can post this pen it is a it is a small pen but I have small hands I have short stubby hands and so small pens are are great for me for a large or long fingered hand this might not be a big enough pen for you and you might be better off um, you know looking at different models but for me it's perfect it is so comfortable it's light it's balanced it's just a delightful pen to write with. I can write with this pen for a really long time. Now, the other thing that's important to note about this pen is that it's a piston filler. That means that it does not take cartridges. You must use bottled fountain pen ink. All right, so it you cannot use the convenience of a cartridge or even a converter. It has to be filled from the bottle. I'm not going to get in how to fill a piston pen right now, but I'll make a video about that eventually. Um, but it's super easy and quick, and it's my favorite kind of, of pen. It happens right here. This is um, a translucent body, not transparent, but you can see the ink, right? You can see where the ink is in this pen. Okay, so posting it is easy. You just post it, all right? Now, the cool thing about this pen is the line variation I can achieve. So I if I if I, I I know this because I've drawn with this many times. So I can use the pen upside down and backwards and I can get a really, really fine line. So I mean just a really fine scratchy for hatching or things like that. So it's super super fine. If I use it the right way and straight up and down, I can also get really fine lines. My, my hand's always going to cover my writing until I move it away. So very fine, super, super fine, fine. Okay. And then if I'm using it normally, it's a little bit, but I, I'm not putting any pressure on the nib. It's a little bit um, thicker than if it's straight up and down. So there I have quite a bit of variation. So I can start like this, I can move this way and go this way. I can get many, many types of, of marks just with that. Now the cool part is when you actually start to apply, apply gentle pressure on this pen. See that? This is unusual for a steel nib pen that's not actually a flex pen. I have a little bit more control over this than I would with a flex pen. Um, it's not quite as loosey-goosey, but I can still get really nice thick lines. I can even get marks that I would normally only get with a dip pen. All right, so you can see just by this little demonstration here, the great variation, all right, in line. Now, I also want to show you, I'll, I'll show you a writing sample. So in my cursive script, it's quite juicy. So I have fairly small handwriting, but um, if you are someone with really teeny tiny handwriting, this may not be your favorite pen for everyday writing. But again, I bought this pen for artwork and it sort of became an everyday writer for me. All right. But I don't mind that thick, juicy look to my, to my writing. I, I actually like it. In print... It is delightful. I get some of that 
lovely line variation. A little bit of shading. This is a very dark ink. I'll talk about the ink in a minute. But it's delightful to write in print with as well. So this is a very dark ink and yet I'm still getting a little bit of shading with it. This ink is called Edelstein Smoky Quartz. Pop it here. Uh, yes, so this is the ink that it's about halfway done. Um, this is the ink that actually came with this pen. This was the Smoky Quartz model, and this is the Edelstein Smoky Quartz ink. It's one of my favorite brown inks. It's it's got beautiful properties when you use it for artwork. Um, but it's a very dark ink, all right, and it's a very wet ink. And so on this paper. All right, let me just go back here. If I rub it, it's it's dry. Even that's dry. Even that's dry. Okay, so that's really quick, right? So if I if I do a couple test marks, all right, um, I'll do a few of them here. So that's just a few seconds. It's still going going to bleed, right? So if I give it a few more seconds, so. It's much less, all right? And then if I gave it even five more seconds, it wouldn't smear at all, as you can see where I wrote this, okay? So it, it, this paper in particular is really great for left-handed people because what happens is as we're writing, our hands tend to go over our writing again and we tend to smear things. Now, while I'm still on this, I'm gonna show you um, another kind of paper. So this is... This is Tomoe River paper, which is a really, really lovely paper for fountain pens. You get beautiful, um, you get beautiful shading and effects on this paper with a fountain pen. But take a look. Not as much with really dark inks. I'm not going to go over the whole sentence, but you can see how lovely the ink lays down. You don't get the bleed through or anything like that. But if you look at this in the light, this ink is still very, very wet. So here, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, <laughs> twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. You could go for a whole minute and this ink will still be wet on this paper. All right, so it is um, it is a tricky paper for left-handed people because, at least for me, unless you're someone who really writes off their paper, um, ink is going to smear, all right, every time. And so I do use this paper sometimes, but I'm very mindful when I'm using it. And I am... Um, very careful not to turn my paper. I don't use it, I should say, I don't use it for long writing sessions because if I did, I'd be finished with the page. I'd have to sit there and wait for almost a minute before I could turn the page. I write fast, right? So there's a there's a reason why um, I don't use this for my everyday writing. It's lovely, I love this paper. But for a left-handed person, it's a little bit tricky. Not only does my hand smear it, if I'm not really, really careful, but it takes forever for me to be able to turn a page. All right. So um, I just wanted to, to throw that in there. So let's go back to our pelicans. Um, so you've seen it now as, um, as a pen that has great possibility for, for sketching. All right. This ink in particular is water... Do I have my brush pen here? Do I have a brush pen here? Uh, 
thought I thought I might have had her, had one, but I don't. Um, this pen has has great possibilities for artwork. The ink, this ink itself is actually water soluble. So if I went back in with a water brush, I could dilute it and, and it would, fit, I, could, I could do line and wash with this ink. But you can also use inks that are document inks like um, Diatramentus Document Brown um, or Document Sepia. Um, those you could use and when they are completely dry, you could use watercolor with them and they'd be fine right so it just depends on on the purpose but as far as an as a writing tool for for sketching it's fabulous now this one i purchased um not that long ago actually um i don't even remember it, is, it hasn't been that long but this is the pelican m200 in pastel green um, it was a limited edition pen. It is absolutely exquisite. I love the top of it. I love how um, how that looks. So pretty. If you can see that beautiful pelican in gold on top, it shimmers. It's got like a clear coating, so it just looks really dimensional. Um, the pen is made out of the same materials, just different colors, has a different feel to it. It does have a totally transparent ink ink window here, so you can see the color of the ink you have in. If I hold it up to the light, I can really see it, um, but that's handy. And it again, just like all M200s and all Pelicans, it is a piston filler. So this one, it's exactly the same pen. I haven't had it as long, but it's the same thing. I can get really nice um, different line variations with this pen. So it's just also a beautiful, a beautiful writer. I have a fairly pale ink in this, but I'm gonna show you. Um, this ink is not as wet as the Edelstein ink. So it's a little easier to write smaller and in my cursive script. And then to print, I'm gonna get a lot of shading with this lighter ink. So the pen, it never skips. <laughs> it just writes, I can't spell. It just writes beautifully every time. So another thing for us lefties that you righties may not experience is the bottom of the page. <laughs> Whenever I get to like within two and a half inches of the bottom, my hand is off the paper and I can't, I, it's really hard for me to write. So I end up leaving this part blank a lot of times. If any of you lefties have any tips for that, I would love to hear. And right-handed people, I mean, is this as much of a problem for you too? I feel like it wouldn't be. I don't know, I feel like it's it's just different. Like that part of your hand will sit, but I could be wrong. So this just shows you um, the beautiful ink flow of this pen and you do get shading in the fine, um, in the fine nib size, right? Shading means when the ink, you see darks and lights in the ink. Not as much with the cursive font, a little bit, but definitely with this. And I'm someone who just really likes that look. I love the look of shading. So this is a super, super um, wonderful pen to write with for long periods of time. Um, let me just see how this ink does. I can't even write down here. My hand's totally off the paper. Works perfect. I mean, all of them, they're already dry. So it, it's just not quite as wet as this as this ink. Um, and this ink, I should tell you, this ink is the Ferris Wheel Press um, ink in color called Goose Poupon, um, which is a really fun line of inks. Um, again, they're by Ferris Wheel Press. I have small bottles of them to try them, and I really like them. But again, it's light. This is a light ink for most people. 
And I will say there's a little, I mean, every now and then I notice a little bit of feathering with this ink, not enough to keep me from using it, but there's definitely a little bit of feathering to it. On this paper, I don't know about on, on other papers, but you can just barely see that. All right, this one, none whatsoever. This one does have a little bit. And they're, they're a newer ink company, so they still may be ironing out the, the rough spots, right? So these are my pelicans, my beautiful, beautiful pelicans. Um, again, it's, it's an investment. I, I'm really all about everyday use of fountain pens. I'm not someone who's going to collect expensive pens. Um, I don't have the budget for it, and I, I don't... I, it's just not what I want them for. My pens are pretty utilitarian. Um, my two favorite brands are, are Pelican and um, the pen that I showed you the last time, um, Coecos. I love Coeco pens. I absolutely love them. I love the price point. I love how they write. Um, and I will do more videos about Coecos very soon. Um, and I have many others to show you as well that are affordable and beautiful. Um, yeah, so... This is my prize. <laughs> These are my prize pens, the Pelican M200. And I think one day soon, I will do an art video, a drawing video where I create a drawing using these pens, um, which will be fun because fountain pens aren't often used for sketching because the line width is so average. For instance, with this one, you know, I don't get a lot of line variation. So upside down and backwards, it's like this. Straight up and down, it's like this. Regular, it's like this. And I get a little bit just because I'm holding the pen on the paper longer, but it's nothing like this. I don't have any flex in this nib. All right, so that's why these are special to me as an artist. And also for handwriting, it does make a difference. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was informative in one way or another. Um, I'm, I just, I love pens and I love paper and I love stationery and I love writing letters and decorating them and all of those things. And so for me, um, it, it, this is just this is just my passion. It's what I love, um, and I want to share it. All right. Thank you so much, and I will see you again soon with something new. Take care.